This is Echo 3, and by request, let's discuss compound helicopters. Niv Mizrahi requested that I make a video about the Sikorsky Raider X. That helicopter seems to be one that's in development for a new U.S. government military contract. Found out it seems to be based largely off of their X-2 design, which was an experimental design for testing out compound helicopters. It has a pilot and one passenger. We'll just use our two passenger bay there. That's what our program has available to us. We will add one rotor in the back because that's what a compound helicopter has. It will have rotors to provide lift, but it will also have an additional rotor, typically a pusher propeller to provide speed for our forward flight. And we won't need full motor size on all of our motors to be able to get the rotors to run at full RPMs. Now what's unique about the X2 and the Raider X is that they are coaxial helicopters as well. And so the way I'm going to achieve that is I'm going to attach my top rotor underneath my bottom rotor and then offset it above. That way they are actually completely in line with each other and I won't have to worry about anything being offset or some funny lift. I will be able to reduce the motor size on these as well because we won't need full power to get this thing to run at full RPMs. And I won't even need to run this at 460 RPMs to achieve enough lift out of them. So I've reduced the RPMs as well. So an interesting fact about these compound helicopters is that Sikorsky has been doing a lot of research in them and developed multiple models. It looks like they have solved some of the problems with fast helicopter flight with different style of blades that can handle that. They gained a lot of research as well when they hired technicians that worked on the Comanche project as well. So the X2 had four blades on both of the rotors, so I'm putting four blades on as well. They will not need nearly as much angle of attack because we're going to get some of our lift during forward flight from wings that we will attach on the side. So compound helicopters seem to offer a lot of advantages because they can travel faster than a traditional helicopter and they can actually save on their fuel or power usage because when they're in forward flight, some of the lift then comes from the wings. So this style of helicopter may be something we see more of in the future. The current holder for the fastest helicopter is the Lynx. And that fastest helicopter in 1986 reached speeds of 111 meters per second or that's 400.9 kilometers an hour, or 249 miles per hour. So we're gonna set up some landing gear on this just to help with our takeoff and landing. The Sikorsky, I believe, used some retractable landing gear. I just don't have as many options in the game, so I'm gonna use these fixed landing gear, and it seems to work out pretty well for us. So the Sikorsky X2 was actually able to reach speeds of 130 meters per second. That's 460 kilometers an hour or 290 miles per hour. So if this would be allowed in the record books for helicopters, it would be the fastest helicopter in the world. Although they don't allow with that with the way records keepings work, it's not a traditional helicopter. And so the Lynx is still technically the fastest regular helicopter. Compound helicopters are their own category because they have elements from both a plane and a helicopter. It's really interesting because they get the advantages of a helicopter. They have the vertical takeoff and landing, very useful for many applications where just you don't have as many options. Civilian rescue obviously has a lot of need for helicopters and military obviously has a lot of use for vertical takeoff when runway options are limited. So 
this may be something we see more of in the future with these compound helicopters because helicopters have issues with limited range and limited speed and these seem to hold promise with solving some of those issues. I'm going to put on just some nose cones here. Interesting, Sikorsky found out that one of their main issues for drag with the helicopter is actually the stack there with the rotors, not the rotors themselves, but all that mounting there above the helicopter, which was providing more drag than the rotors themselves. So we're going to put on our rear set of rotors. The X2 used six blades in the back, and so I'm going to use six blades as well. I'm going to set these up with an inverse motor turning clockwise, so I'm going to use the clockwise blades. Make sure that the painted side of the blade is facing forward, or in the case of the helicopter blades, that the striped side or that painted side is facing up for the direction of travel. I'm going to use these batteries here just mostly for aesthetics so I can get this rotor part exactly where I want it. I want the coaxial rotors to be directly over the center of mass. I'm just eyeballing it there, but it seems to work out pretty well. Now I'm going to set up the action groups. I unbind the brake action group from the motors. That way I can just use them for the landing gear. Then I'm going to set up one set of rotors. It's going to be bound to one Cal 1000, and, or one set of propeller blades is going to be set to the one Cal 1000, and the rear set is going to be bound to the other. And I was doing some research as well on how these things are controlled, and it is definitely different than both a plane and a, a regular helicopter, because they have multiple controls to deal with. And so this is a little trickier to fly. So for the rotor, for the helicopter blades, I'm going to set my angle pretty limited here. We only need about zero to five degrees of move rate right there. So that's all I'm going to set there. And then I'm going to change the play time to just one second. That way I can move it a little faster across, but I can fine tune then my the amount of lift. But five degrees is going to be plenty for lifting this thing off the ground. Now this is going to be different for the rear because this is going to be both forward and backward. So I'm going to put a play position in the middle that's going to be zero and then I'm going to have probably about 15 degrees for rear movement and 45 degrees for forward movement for this helicopter. So I'm going to have to put the play position in the exact middle when I don't want this thing to fly forward or backward. Now I have a joystick that I am able to set at the exact middle for my throttle and that's what I'm doing with this. So it'll be very easy for me to achieve zero degrees on that rear propeller because I have a fixed position on my joystick. Let's add a couple solar panels to this as well. This will add some weight and I'll have to change things around. But this should give us plenty of power when we fly. We won't have to worry about recharging, at least during the daytime. Just move my main propeller, my lift blades here back just a little bit, make sure I stay over the center mass, and this thing should be pretty well ready to fly. Uh, an older model of compound helicopter that you may have heard of is the AH-56 Cheyenne by Lockheed. It was able to reach speeds of 103 meters per second, that's 247 miles per hour or 298 kilometers an hour. I'm going to pull up all of my displays here because I need to see my RPMs and my exact values because I don't have any other indicators on with the throttle to really help me out knowing what's going on. So forward lift seems to work out. I'm going to be using my action groups for changing my deployment angle on these blades and that's all done with my joystick. I have a hat control and then I'm able to adjust the power and the deployment angle on the helicopter style blades and then I use my main throttle for the pusher propeller blades and it works out really well for me able to control this and it does take a, a fair amount of power to fly this but with the solar panels it doesn't seem to have any issues as far as running out of power this is providing plenty for that and we are definitely going to top out the speed record, I believe, with this particular helicopter. 
by upping the RPM values on the pusher propeller to 460, we are able to get a lot faster. Looks like we're gonna reach speeds of 206 meters per second. That is 720 kilometers hour or 447 miles per hour. This would make it the fastest compound helicopter in the world by a large margin. Looks like we're able to control this thing pretty well with the pressure propeller as far as forward and backward flight and then the main helicopter blades do a pretty good job of keeping this stable. This is a really good helicopter. I am Echo 3. Thanks for joining me to discuss compound helicopters. I will see you next time.